All right, what's happening, folks? Uh, this is the DFS Five Pack. I'm Ryan. This is Matt. We are going to just start talking fantasy football on a daily basis. <laughs> earlier, earlier, I figure we got the free time right now with quarantine. Uh, I think we're going to get a baseball season at some point, but we don't really know the logistics of it yet. I'm really hoping we get some NBA playoffs. We don't know that yet, but I feel good about getting a football season. So let's wrap about fantasy football. Start the research uh, a couple months earlier than normal. For sure. Did you? Uh, I didn't ask you this before we started the video, so we can do whatever you want. I know we had the idea of talking over a couple of players. Yep. So we, all right, cool. I just didn't know that's where we were going because, again, we got time. I'm down for basically whatever you want in the next 20 to 30 minutes. All right. So what we're going to do a lot moving forward is probably go through almost all the individual players that you'll be looking at draft throughout the season. We got months to prep for this one, plenty of free time. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we each wanted to pick out one guy that we expect, you know, per the current rankings that we don't like where he is like we think you should definitely not take a look at him and then one guy that we're kind of looking at for a bounce back year or maybe just a guy you think is being currently undervalued that you would like to go ahead and reach for whether it's in an auction or a snake draft uh i'll let you go first give me either one who is somebody that you're looking at well i feel like i almost cheated a little bit because for the guy that i don't love where he's where he's ranked we talked about him a lot yesterday especially towards the end of the show and that's going to be nick chubb and it has nothing to do with Nick Chubb himself. I think he's fantastic. I like him a lot. I'm just also a big-time Kareem Hunt fan now that they have him for the full year. Like, Kareem Hunt is really good. I don't think he's better than Nick Chubb, but, like, I don't think that's crazy to say either. I think, they're like, they're very – they offer different things, but they're very similarly talented. Let me give you a comparison to something I think we were talking about before the show, which wasn't football-related, but, like, Nick Chubb – on a pure running perspective is probably like a nine, right? Like on just pure running back ability to run the rock nine, maybe even a little bit over that. He's an excellent runner of the football, but he's not great in the passing game. Meanwhile, Kareem Hunt might be at seven and a half or an eight, but he's a much better guy in the passing game. So you don't lose as much and you can see a spot where these guys are splitting touches 50, 50 and riding hot hands. It's easier to rest the guy, right? For sure. Cause I think that's the point. Like the, the other point, like kind of that you snuck in there. Kareem Hunt isn't like a six running the football. He's like damn near an eight. Like he's good. He's not like the best, you know, uh, off tackle runner in the league, but he's damn good. There's a reason he led the rush, the league in rushing. His he's lap. not Saquon, but he's better than Jamal Williams. Exactly. Um, again, I like Nick Chubb, but he, I wouldn't take him with my first overall pick, my second, you know, overall pick anywhere in there. Obviously, if you're looking at round three and on, sure. But it's also a situation where if I draft Nick Chubb, I need Kareem Hunt. So then you're taking two roster spots. It's not like Kareem Hunt's going at the end of the draft. <clears throat> I think that I I think that Nick Chubb's just not for me this year, and I hate to say it because he's a Brown. I like him a lot, but the emergence and the presence of Kareem Hunt just takes him off my board. What are your thoughts? I got another comparison that'll make sense to some online video game players out there, and what I mean by that is Nick Chubb, from a purely talent perspective is a top four runner of the football in or top four runner of the rock in football only up there with Saquon maybe Dalvin Cook Christian McCaffrey Zeke he is right up there with the ability to tote the rock but strategically he is in not in a very good spot because he does have the other guy to compliment the other guy is pat better in the passing game we all play in PPR leagues for the most part and you know he's not going to catch a lot of passes so while he might have 300 more yards rushing than Joe Mixon right below him easily uh, he's just not going to catch the passes to go along with it. And the comparison I'm getting to is I've been playing Madden online right now out of pure boredom. And almost now that I've had like a really good winning record for a while, I'm up there playing some really talented players. I win a lot more than I lose, even though those guys are mostly better Madden players than me. The reason being is I play a little bit better strategy. I ground the clock to the place that I want it. I'm usually like closing the game on a touchdown with like 10 seconds to go because strategically it's better. Nick Chubb is a better runner of the football than a lot of other guys around him, but strategically it's just not going to be in a good spot due to the other guy in Kareem Hunt uh, and the fact that he doesn't get catches. Amen. So I'm with you. Now, this is kind of funny that you chose Nick Chubb to go with. For those of you who might be new to the channel, Matt's a Cleveland guy. He's a Browns guy. So he's picking his guy down there, projected on ESPN's top 100 right now to go 14 overall. Uh, I'm going to take my current running back at number 12 there, Aaron Jones, and wow. say that. This is dropping like a rock. Like, I wouldn't touch Aaron Jones in the first five rounds this year. Wow, first five rounds? Go on. So a lot of Aaron Jones' value last year came, what, 
courtesy of the passing game and came courtesy of the touchdowns. Well, those touchdowns are not going to replicate. They brought in, the, you know, A.J. Dillon, who is a big bruising back, very much in the Derrick Henry mold that you see listed right below Aaron Jones right there. I think Aaron Jones will be lucky to score six times this year. I think that it's hard to say that. I think that it, it, you're right in that he won't replicate what he did last year. But touchdowns are, I don't want to say random, but they are very random to a certain extent. And the, the only thing I'll say about Aaron Jones, and you're right, that I wouldn't draft him 12th overall. I do view him kind of like Nick Chubb, although I'd probably rather have Chubb. Oh, I'd much rather have Chubb. I don't know. See, for me, Aaron Jones, I think he, he's still really good. A.J. Dillon is good. He was really good in college, but we don't know what he's going to bring to the pros yet. Aaron Jones is good, man. Like, the my only question is whether they believe he's really good or they, you know, because they draft I'm not him. sure that they do. He's not the kind of running back that Matt LaFleur likes. It's what he had last year. And that's why, for a small guy, he had a lot of touchdowns that came on little runs inside the five-yard line. I think he's unlikely to get a lot of those. Uh, you know, Matt LaFleur, coming from that Tennessee mold, liking the idea of a big bruising back in Derrick Henry. I think A.J. Dillon is his guy, and Aaron Jones is going to be a complement to this in the passing game. You saw okay. last season a lot of times, like, if Aaron Jones wasn't at his best day, he had no problem going with Jamal Williams, who was a clearly much less talented back. Um, I'm with you. Uh I don't know. I haven't looked at it deep enough to say I wouldn't take him in the first five rounds, but I get your point. You're just like avoiding him. Yeah, I, I think we also saw that once Devontae Adams got healthy, they did not use Aaron Jones in the passing game nearly the way that they did in kind of a desperation mode when Devontae Adams was out last year. So um, let's look it up. How many catches did Aaron Jones have last year? And we'll look through his game log real quickly just to kind of talk about where things went when Devonta Adams was back, because he lost a lot of his passing game value there. Mm -hmm. So last season, he ended the year with 49 receptions on 68 targets. That's actually a little less than I thought. I thought he caught 60 balls. And where did a lot of these catches come from? Rushing, receiving. These games when Devonta Adams is out, because he got hurt in the Eagles game. So he did have six catches that game, seven, four, four, seven. And then for the rest of the season, got a total of 11, 15 catches, six of them coming against Washington. He had one, two, three games without a single reception. So that's where a lot of his value came from early, and it was gone. And a lot of these touchdowns, they came with running the ball inside the five. You have to assume the more prototypical back in A.J. Dell and a big bruiser, he's going to get a lot of those touches in the five-yard line this year. You'd think I'm not writing off Jones as much as you are, but I agree. Like he's definitely not a guy I would take with my first, second or third round pick. I forget who I was listening to the other day. Talk about it. That as much as everybody's going into Aaron Rodgers and what this draft meant for that, he goes, it's going under the radar. The fact that they had one of the top fantasy running backs last year in Aaron Jones, but they went with a running back in the second round. Dude, it's freaking ridiculous to compound like they're what they did in the first round. They go for, I mean, I'd be so pissed if I were you right now. It doesn't make sense, right? We've talked about this at length already, but when you have your strengths offensively for the Green Bay Packers are Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. And so who do you try to get better? You go with a new quarterback and a new running back and don't replace any of the help you have. You need help at receiver. You did go get a tight end in the third round. Um, you lost one of your better offensive linemen. You didn't make a real effort to replace him early on. It just made no sense. Nah, and a lot of sports like is about this, like and about... I know you can't draft and stuff on what the fans think, but the Packers have an awful look to their organization right now. Like nationally, everyone's talking trash about them. Obviously, if Jordan Love turns out to be really good, you know, that, that the tide will change there. But for me, like, and I heard someone say this yesterday, I can't even remember who for all the ESPN heads talking. Like, I don't care what they say to Aaron Rodgers about how, you know, they're going to, they're still good this year. Like blah, blah, blah. Actions speak louder than words. And they just basically showed him that this is their team. It's not his team. If I'm him, I want out. I keep saying that, but so do I, that's how I feel. I just keep thinking that, uh, unless Jordan love ends up being great. I mean, Matt LaFleur and Gunnikis just really hits their wagon to a guy that a lot of people didn't, weren't even really that impressed with. Right. Yeah. Honestly, so that seems like a weird way to like, try to like push your career forward weird way when you got like a top you know arguably a top five all-time qb and a guy that 
you could definitely win a Super Bowl with this year. Like, I don't think anyone would question that. So, do you know what it reminds me of in a little way? Let's get back to some DFS talk. You know, some days where like uh, we'll be saying, like, who's your favorite center? And there'll be a chalk center that I like and all the masses like. And 90% of people will say, it's got to be Whiteside or Drummond tonight. It has to be. And you'll be sitting there, no, I like Carl Anthony Towns. I like Carl Anthony Towns. And then as the day progresses and you think about it, you're like, okay, I still like Carl Anthony Towns. But the more I think about it, like, why am I hitching my wagon to him tonight knowing that I need him to ball out more than this guy in a good spot? And if it doesn't work out that way, I'm, I'm screwed. Like, I kind of feel like in a weird way that's how they are. Like, they're making this random gpp call where everybody doesn't think it makes sense and then unless it goes off you look like a moron yeah i know what you're saying um it's a yeah, weird comparison but i thought you'd understand i get it for sure more like the last part of what you said like they're making a really bold call when they didn't even have to like they didn't even have to and you know they doubled down taking a running back in the second round honestly yeah, definitely. They really double down. And it just doesn't seem to, like, again, unless it works out perfectly, you look bad. I could not believe they took a running back in the second round. I was obviously shocked that they took love in the first round. But, like, I, I was, I got offered, like, an entry into a free draft pool by DraftKings, like, where they just had questions about the draft or whatever. And one of the questions was, where will Jordan Love get drafted? And they had, like, the Patriots, the, I can't even remember, Jaguars. We had four teams, and the Packers were included there. And then they had yeah, that wasn't totally. I, I wasn't surprised by it. I didn't like it, but I wasn't surprised by it. I wasn't like absolutely mind blown. I was surprised, but then to back it up with a running back like that, I think just my jaw dropped. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I know they really. He wants to move this team more in like the Tennessee, San Francisco mold of running the football. So I do understand what he's thinking. It doesn't mean that I necessarily agree. And I've heard this before, and it's what I was thinking about when I woke up this morning. Um, good coaches, like, they will be able to make the guys kind of fit their system. But, like, great coaches know how to get the best of what they're given. Like, Matt yeah. LaFleur seems like he's in really, like, this is the way it has to be. We have to switch the team. Like, no, you have Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones. Let's get the best out of what we have right now. And in two years, when Aaron Jones' rookie contract is over and Aaron Rodgers is 38 – then we'll move more to that mold. But let's not waste two years because this is what you want. Aaron Jones is good, dude. Like, we just talked about Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. He's definitely on that level. Like For sure. It's right with those guys. Um, I think they're all, like, very similarly talented. Would you agree? Definitely. I agree. All right. So the next thing we want to do is those are some of the guys that we wouldn't touch for where they're currently projected. I expect Aaron Jones to fall big time. I think – the addition of A.J. Dillon, come draft season, Aaron Jones will definitely move down from 12. I think Nick Chubb will stay steady right here, but I think you'll be looking at Aaron Jones more in this range down here from where people expect him to go. I get that 100%. All right, so let's talk about the guys that we like this year to outperform their current ADP or have improving seasons. I don't know about you, but I found a real sweet spot down here in the early third round, um, early fourth round actually, is a bunch of guys I thought – could overperform where they're being projected right now. Uh, and I'm going to go with a guy who's a little bit of a darling of yours. I love the value of Leonard Fournette right now in the mid-fourth round. I actually thought this was a sweet spot too, but a little bit lower of a sweet spot for me. Um, okay, go on about Fournette. He really wasn't a guy I was looking at there. Not that I don't like him. I just, he wasn't a guy that jumped out at me. Go on. One, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars offense has every opportunity to, I don't think it's going to be great or anything like that, but it could definitely improve off of last season, right? So you get uh, Gardner Minshew now comes into the season knowing that he's the guy. He's going to feel significantly more comfortable. Another, you know, another offseason planning as a starter. He should just feel more at home. You got a relatively strong receiving core, DJ Chark now in his second year. You got other guys that can back him up. So I expect the offense to be a little bit better. They took uh, my favorite receiver in the draft. Yeah, I got the Jaguars picks pulled up right here. Your favorite receiver is uh, Chenault. Yeah, he's awesome. So, and they took another guy in Colin Johnson in the fifth round. I mean, this is a team that looks like they have every opportunity to be a little bit better, right? Yes. I'm going to counter with something in a minute, but continue. Okay, they didn't draft any running backs, so it's not like they were clearly looking for a successor. We know that running backs have a short life, shelf life. Like Leonard Fournette also took a big pat, big bump up in the passing game last year, right? A bigger part of it. Uh, I just think that you got potential 
I mean, this is a guy that was going round one two years ago. I think you got a, a safe, safe play for steady carries, uh, touchdown equity if they're able to score more often. I mean, I think he covers everything that you want for a guy in the fourth round. I think that there's more question marks than you see. I like okay. Fortnite, you know that. But my question marks are twofold. One, how good is Gardner Minshew? He could be not good, and I'm not going to be surprised at all. I think that's a legit question. Number two, and bigger than that, because I don't think Minshew is going to be sucked because he showed some last year. I hope that I'm hopeful that he takes a step forward. The biggest worry for me with Fournette is he seems like the Jaguars have, have gotten rid of a lot of their old team that, you know, made the AFC title game a couple of years ago. He's come out pretty publicly and I don't think he's long for the Jaguars. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, that I doubt that they're going to trade him at this point with the draft already gone. They didn't draft a running back. But what happens if they lose their first three games? Like, is he pouting on the bench? Like, that's a legit concern for me. Um, he's not a guy I trust in that situation. I get all your points, but I'm not sure he's for me yet, and I'm happy we have a few months to think about it. Uh, that's probably a classic Matt Ryan difference right there is I feel like you are going out of your way to look at some intangibles and maybe they end up being true. Well, I feel like you say I'm going out of my way. I feel like you just don't know about them. I mean, that's one way to look at it. My thoughts are like, are they not not trying to win football games? Well, do you know about them or not? Know that they got rid of a lot of their other team? No, that Fournette has been like public that he was on the trade block for weeks going into the draft, that he was rumored to go to Tampa Bay, that he was rumored to go to like five different teams. I, I no, I mean it's not something that I've been looking into. So you can't say I'm like going out of my way to look at something when you don't even know about it. That's not fair to me. No, that's fair. But it's, I mean, I always look at things a little bit differently than you do, correct? And my for thoughts sure. are are they they're not trying to win football games this year? But, is he not trying to – are they not going to give him the ball? I mean, where is his backup coming in that's going to play? I mean, that's, there's a lot to be seen until the start of training camp, right? There's plenty of running backs that I'm sure will get scooped up. Plus, they did have that one guy last year. I can't even remember his name who they like a lot. Uh, God, what is that guy's name? Um, Armstead or something like that. Uh, God, I can't even remember what his name I'm is. looking it up right now. If everything goes with, yeah, Armstead. Well, Armstead. Yep. If everything goes well, he's in a good position, and they do, you know, if their offense is better, they can, you know, he's got a lot of touchdown equity. They don't have a good O line though. Um, I'm not sure about him. I don't know how good the Jaguars are going to be. Not really a guy I'm targeting this year, but again, we've got plenty of time to look at it. Uh, you made up the point, Gardner Minshew. How good is he? I mean, I don't expect Gardner Minshew to be this great quarterback moving forward like I don't expect him to be uh, a pro bowler this year or anything like that but I would be confident I feel good about the idea of him being better in year two than year one where all of a sudden game one he's just thrusted into the starting role that he had not been preparing for now I've heard like talk of like Andy Dalton potentially coming to Jacksonville I would like Fournette a lot more if that's the case Um, yeah I mean Andy Dalton I was actually listening to Skip and Shannon talk about him yesterday And he hit his peak very early, right? Like, you know what you're getting with Andy Dalton. Bad organization he's played for throughout his career. Uh, But he's, you know, the adult in the room, right? He's not going to be an MVP, but he's a very solid NFL quarterback that if his, you know, he had gone somewhere else, maybe his career would have gone even better. See, I agree with that. I think he's fine. I don't agree with this take that Cincinnati's some bad organization. Like, they're fine. They've been fine just because they haven't won a Super Bowl. They've been to a Super Bowl. They've been they haven't won a playoff. playoff game in like what two decades? They've been to the, they've been to the playoffs like mo- they were in the playoffs like with Andy Dalton. They almost won a playoff game and with Carson Palmer. So I mean that's I, again that's I'm not even trying to nitpick. I just I don't think Cincinnati is this black hole that other people seem to believe. Maybe I'm wrong there. I just I don't maybe think- that maybe that's because your standard is so low being a Cleveland fan. No, I mean honestly they've <laughs> had Carson Palmer like they haven't even been bad. They had one bad year. So you. You're a Cleveland guy, and you have a division there in the AFC North with the Ravens, the Steelers, the Bengals, and the Browns. And by putting it this way, I think maybe you'll get a little bit more on board. The Bengals are way more Cleveland than they are Baltimore or Pittsburgh. Um, meaning? Meaning that it's slightly dysfunctional. They, they you know, held on to Marvin Lewis for way too long. They haven't won a playoff game in decades. Like, I would definitely, if you told me, am I lumping Cincinnati in with the Pittsburgh and Baltimore's, you know, well-run franchises 
or with Cleveland that has been relatively dysfunctional, I'm definitely putting them in the same boat as Cleveland. They are much more Cleveland to me than Baltimore and Pittsburgh. I agree with that. Okay. I, I thought you would. Not saying that Pittsburgh maybe they haven't done better. Two of the most stable franchises in the league. I think Cincinnati is like mid-tier. I think they're like – I'm trying to think of a team that I think are, are like Cincinnati. The Chargers. Okay. Like, I think Green Bay is mid-tier, but they've been mid-tier with Pro Bowl quarterbacks. So maybe they're like Cincinnati, just they've had better quarterbacks. I mean, that makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it makes life a lot easier. You put Aaron, you put Joe Burrow on Cincinnati, well, let's see what they can do. Right? I mean, or does Cincinnati mess up Joe Burrow? Right. I mean, that's an interesting Or is Joe Burrow right? – or if we don't even know how good Joe Burrow is. It's a very interesting one, 100%. I love it. Right, like you think about like Carson Palmer, because if I remember correctly, he was Heisman Trophy winner, number one overall draft pick, right? He was very good for that. He was a solid quarterback. He wasn't Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, but he was clearly above average. It's like when you draft a guy number one overall, you want him to be better than that because you want like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, but there are only so many of those guys. He had a good career. Cincinnati's yeah, yeah. best since Boomer Esiason for sure. I would say – I wouldn't call it a good career. I'd say it was solid, but I think it might have been good if it wasn't for the injury. Because he had that major injury that derailed the playoff game, and I just don't think he – he was never yeah. quite 100% himself after that. He had a lot of potential. He's a guy that his career got ruined by injuries. Yeah, I, like I would love – what would Carson Palmer have been if he had been in Tom Brady's position? Like if he had gone and run this team under Bill Belichick, I think you might be looking at Carson Palmer with this – great NFL career, potentially, if he had been in a different spot. That's where I think, like, player development gets so underrated. And a guy like, you know, you brought up, I think, David Carr a while back. Like, it was just a lost cause from the beginning. How different would his career have been if he had been a Pittsburgh Steeler? For sure. No doubt about that. He's the first guy I think about. You know, player development is often underrated, and I think it's one of the more interesting what-ifs when it comes to all sports. Like, what if this guy had gone somewhere else? You know, what if Aaron Rodgers had gone to San Francisco and Alex Smith had gone to Green Bay? It'd be so interesting if we could put, like, a, some sort of simulation down to see where their careers would have gone. Agreed. Would love to see it. You know, if you want to make a lot of money, invite some kind of, you know, invent some kind of simulator where you can check things out like that. Yeah, I mean, you'll make a ton of money if you can invent that simulator. No doubt about that. <laughs> um, I can't. I'm a lost cause. I don't have that kind of technology. Uh, uh, who is your guy? I'm doubling down. I'm going two guys basically right next to each other, ADP, both from the same division, from the same division we just talked about with Cincinnati. I'm going with Odell Beckham and Juju Smith-Schuster. I'll talk about both of them for a minute here. So I love both of them this year, assuming that this is where they're really getting drafted, you know, early fifth round, 38th and 40th overall. Starting with Juju. This is a guy that was a lot of people's number one receiver going into last year, like number one fantasy receiver with no Antonio Brown, a healthy Ben Roethlisberger. He was in prime position to take that next step. I'm a big Smith Schuster fan. And I think with a healthy Roethlisberger, he comes right back into being a top 10, if not top five fantasy receiver. Um, I think that's just a no brainer. If Roethlisberger is healthy, I like Juju a lot. As far as Odell goes, trying to leave my Cleveland bias aside. But I'm really hopeful of the Browns offense this year. I think you're going to see them really establish the run early, and that's going to open up the passing game completely. The Browns know what they have in Odell Beckham. They know who he is. They know he's coming off a down year last year. I think kind of like Tom Brady in Tampa, they make it a point to get Odell in the end zone early and often. It's risky because of the year he had last year. He's ranked too high based on the year he had last year. But I love, and this is something we talk about a lot, going to guys that have fallen in rankings from the previous year. Both Smith, Zuster, and Odell were, you know, top 10, top 15 guys off the boards in most drafts. Now you're getting them in the early fifth round. I like them a lot. I don't suppose that you'll agree with me, but I don't suppose you'll, like, really disagree with me either. All right, so I, these are two guys that I can understand why you like them. And as far as Juju Smith-Schuster is concerned, uh, I mean, are we going into next season assuming Big Ben is good to go, and ready to rock? I mean, if that's the case, it's a totally different Pittsburgh Steelers team. This is another team very much like the Jaguars with Leonard Fournette where the world was rocked 
very early in the season by the loss yeah. of their quarterback, right? I mean, that just changes everything. You didn't plan for that in the preseason. You had uh, a couple of bad quarterbacks playing, you know, musical chairs over there. So it's a totally different situation for Juju. If we're going into the season, then Big Ben is good to go. And even though he's older and not what he once was, he's still a significant upgrade of what they ran out there last year. So that one, to me, makes a lot of sense. As far as Odell Beckham goes, my question is, who is Odell Beckham? Because you take away that amazing catch. Who is this guy? I don't know. But I think if you are getting him 40th overall, that's the kind of home run swing that I'm completely on board with because there still is talent there. This is a guy that, you know, some people were talking about being their number one overall wide receiver last year. You saw him going in round one in some drafts. And while I didn't agree with that, I can understand why somebody got excited about the notion and the idea. Lower expectations this year. I don't trust Odell in the slightest. But for what you're swinging for for upside right here, this is, a, to me, like a, a 2-0 count in baseball and you're just swinging for a home run. I'm totally on board. Yeah, exactly. That's all it is. He can obviously bust because, like you said, who is Odell Beckham? But if you get what I think he is and what I'm sure a lot of people think he is, and if he has a really good Odell Beckham year, I mean, it's not crazy to think he'll be the number one right. He won't be the number one right receiver in fantasy, but it's not crazy to think he could have a really, really good year. Yeah, I am much more on board with, uh, especially if you get like a, like let's say you got the first second round pick and you go with Galladay or you get Chris Godwin or somebody you feel comfortable as your wide receiver one. I love shooting for the stars with Odell Beckham is like a possible wide receiver too. Like if you're able to get a Leonard Fournette in my eyes and like let's say a Zeke as your running backs. Now you've got Chris Godwin or Amari Cooper or whoever it is you feel comfortable with. Like taking Odell right now as your number two wide receiver when you feel really good about your other three guys completely makes sense to me. All right. Well, we see that eye to eye. Great. So, uh, but I trust Juju. I mean, if we go into the season and we think Big Ben's fine, maybe he's not quite what he once was five years ago, but he's still a pretty darn good NFL quarterback. I mean, they're going to move the rock a little bit. No doubt about that. So, I mean, Pittsburgh, that was just a bad situation last year. I mean, Connor missing extended time everywhere. They, they were so beat up. And you talk about not having a good backup quarterback situation. I mean, their backup quarterbacks are not good. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember which one was it you thought was the worst person to ever play football. Oh, um, what was Mason? it? Hot? Mason, Mason Rudolph. Yeah, exactly. That's why I thought it was he was the one because I know they had a little musical chairs going on there where uh, he's not good. He might be a little better than you give him credit for, but not much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. He's not good. Yeah, <laughs> not good in the slightest. So uh, expect Juju to have been a much better spot this year because we never really got to see what he was able to offer last year because he just had Big Ben for such a tiny amount of time. This is true. all true. So um, last point before we uh, stop, you know, kind of breaking down this draft early on. We mentioned this yesterday. I love the idea, especially in auction drafts where you have the money to do it making sure that you get up to a Christian McCaffrey or a Saquon Barkley with your number one overall guy. Because for me, yes, I'll take Devontae Adams or Julio Jones before I'll take Adam Thielen or Cortland Sutton or anything like that. But I like the value down here in round four this year. So I want to spend my money on one of these two guys. And then if I have to load up and skip a little bit until I get down to uh, you know Adam Thielen, Leonard Fournette, Chris Carson, so, Juju Smith-Schuster, Odell Beckham Jr. That's how I'm looking at things from an auction jack perspective. I know I'm gonna, we're going to end on this note because I want to ask you something because this actually is just coming up right now. I'm in a dynasty league. I've been in one forever. My team is – I don't – I lack running backs. I was really good for a few years, and I had a rough year last year. And I have the second overall pick in the rookie draft this year, and it just started. I was expecting Edwards Hilaire to go number one for sure. He did not go number one, though. Jonathan Taylor for Indianapolis went number one, and he's probably ranked a little bit below Edwards Lair. Um, any idea who you would take in that spot, or you just have no idea? I mean, you're looking at Clyde right here? I'm looking at Clyde, or I'm looking at Judy for Denver, who's probably ranked way lower. I'd rather take a wide receiver, but I feel like I can't miss skip that value, right? Right. Kansas City's offense is going to be explosive. I mean, this guy should just fall into touchdowns, right? I agree. It's just such a better spot. And honestly, like 
there's preparing for the future, which is probably why you like a wide receiver because they play longer. And there's just taking what falls into your lap. Exactly. Uh, that's what I would do because I don't know how many wide receivers do you need? I, I feel like he's a sure thing for the next five years. All right, cool. Answer so. that. All right, guys, uh, we'll continue to talk fantasy football. Thumbs up is always appreciated. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.